and good morning, and Merry Christmas. Uh, are you ready for Christmas? Of course, Christmas is one of those things, it comes whether we're ready or not, and it seems like it always comes too quickly, but it is a great time of the year. Uh, generally, we get together with family members that we don't always see. Uh, of course, that may mean travel, and if you're traveling this week, uh, pray that you'd have safe travel, or if you have folks coming to visit you, they'll be safe. Uh, my wife and two daughters and my two daughters' families will be here for the Christmas Eve service, and then we'll spend a few days together, uh, so that'll be fun to be, be all together, at least for the first 24 hours, and then we'll, then we'll see how it goes after that. But uh, it is a time to spend with our families and our loved ones, but especially it's a time to remember God's gift uh, of the Christ child and uh, the promise of salvation that we can have if we have a relationship with him. And so uh, I pray that that also will be a part of your Christmas celebration. So where is love? in the Christmas story. 2,000 years ago, the world was not so much different than it is now. The people of that time had been heavily taxed and faced heavy prospects of a sharp increase to cover expanding military expenses. The economy was in rough shape. The threat of world domination by a cruel, ungodly, power-intoxicated band of men was ever just below the threshold of consciousness. Moral deterioration had corrupted the upper levels of society and was moving rapidly onto the broad base of the populace. Conformity was the spirit of the age. Government handouts were being used uh, with increasing lavishness to keep the population from rising up and throwing out the leaders. Interest rates were spiraling upward in the midst of an inflated economy. External religious observances were considered a political asset, and abnormal emphasis was being placed upon sports and athletic competition. Racial tensions were at a breaking point. And in such a time, and amid such a people, a child was born to a migrant couple who had just signed up for a fresh round of taxation and who were soon to become political exiles. And the child was called, among other things, Emmanuel, God with us. Where is love in the Christmas story? We find it in Luke's Gospel. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words uh, and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to, be call, and you are to call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. 
I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Here is also love in the Christmas story. It all happened in a moment, a most remarkable moment. As moments go, that one appeared no different than any other. If you could somehow pick it off the timeline and examine it, it would look exactly like the ones that had passed while you've heard these words. It came and and it went. It, It was preceded and succeeded by others just like it. It was one of the countless moments that have marked time since eternity became measurable. But in reality, that particular moment was unlike any other. For through that segment of time, a spectacular thing occurred. God became a man. While the creatures of earth walked unaware, divinity arrived. Heaven opened herself and placed her most precious one in a human womb. The omnipotent, in one instant, made himself breakable. He who had been spirit became pierceable. He who was larger than the universe became an embryo. And he who sustains the world with a word chose to be dependent upon the nourishment of a young girl. Majesty in the midst of the mundane. Holiness in the filth of sheep manure and sweat. Divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable, through the womb of a teenager, and in the presence of a carpenter. Wide awake is Mary. (laughs) My, how young she looks. The pain has been eclipsed by wonder. She looks into the face of the baby, her son, her Lord, her, her majesty. At this point in history, the human being who best understands who God is and what he is doing is a teenage girl in a smelly stable. She can't take her eyes off of him. Somehow, Mary knows that she's holding God. So this is he. She remembers the words of the angel. His kingdom will never end. She touches the face of the the infant God How long was your journey? This baby had overlooked the universe. These rags keeping him warm had been the robes of eternity. His golden throne room had been abandoned in favor of a dirty sheep pen, and worshiping angels had been replaced with kind but bewildered shepherds. God as a fetus. Holiness sleeping in a womb. The creator of life being created. God had entered the world as a baby. God had come near. This is love in the Christmas story. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is love. 
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on the David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. <clears throat> we find love in the Christmas story. Untethered by time, God sees us all, and he loves what he sees. Flooded by emotion, overcome by pride, the star maker turns to us one by one by one and says, you are my child. I love you dearly. Oh, <clears throat> I'm aware that someday you'll turn from me and walk away. But I want you to know I've already provided a way back. And to prove it, God did something extraordinary. Stepping down from the throne, he removed his robe of light and wrapped himself in a human skin. The light of the universe entered a dark, wet womb. He whom angels worship nestled himself in the placenta of a peasant, was birthed into that cold night, and then slept on a cow's hay. Mary didn't know whether to give him milk or give him praise, but she gave him both, since he was, as near as she could figure, both hungry and holy. Joseph didn't know whether to call him Junior or Father, but in the end he called him Jesus, since that's what the angel had said, and since he didn't have the faintest idea what to name a god that he could cradle in his arms. Can anything make me stop loving you, God asks? Watch me speak your language. Watch me sleep on your earth and feel your hurts. Behold, the maker of sight and sound as he sneezes, coughs, and blows his nose. You wonder if I understand how you feel? Look into the dancing eyes of the kid in Nazareth. That's God walking to school. Ponder the toddler at Mary's table. That's God spilling his milk. You wonder how long my love will last? Find your answer on a splintered cross on a craggy hill. That's me up there, your maker, your God. Nail stabbed and bleeding, covered in spit and sin soaked. The one hanging on the cross says, that's your sin I'm feeling. That's your death I'm dying. That's your resurrection I'm living, and that's your eternal life I'm offering. That's how much I love you. That's love in the Christmas story. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, 
But perfect love drives out fear. We love because he first loved us. When God wanted to defeat sin, he, his ultimate weapon was the sacrifice of his own son. On Christmas Day, 2,000 years ago, the birth of a tiny baby in an obscure village lying in a manger was God's supreme demonstration of perfect love. There is no greater love than this, that one lay down his life for a friend. This is love in the Christmas story. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, and people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives in the truth comes into the light so that it may be may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This, too, is love in the Christmas story. Same mind, Christ Jesus, who, being the very nature of God, did not grasp equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord in the glory of God the Father. The first time Jesus came, he came veiled in the form of a child. A star marked his arrival. Wise men brought him gifts. There was no room for him. The first time Jesus came, only a few attended his arrival. The first time he came, he came as a baby. The next time Jesus comes, he will be recognized by all. Heaven will be lit by his glory. He will bring rewards to his own. The next time Jesus comes, the world won't be able to contain his glory. Every eye shall see him. The next time he comes as sovereign king and Lord of all. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Truly, love is found in the Christmas story. We acknowledge this love when we experience and express love to others and have a love relationship with God. When we accept, when we recognize and accept God's love by accepting the Christ child into our lives as our Savior and our Lord. We acknowledge this love when we Uh, bow before the manger and order our lives in that position. When we find ways to share that love with others and our lives are directed with those qualities that best reflect Jesus. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
self-control, and sacrifice. We celebrate the faith, hope, and love of Christmas when the reality of, the, reality of these events are in our thoughts and affect our actions throughout the year. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Christmas celebration, for these events that have been uh, celebrated and remembered for generations and for centuries. And each time that we experience them, each, each time that we hear them again, each time that we participate in them in some way, uh, we are reminded of your love, reminded of the opportunity that we have to uh, experience that love relationship with you through the Christ child. Dear Heavenly Father, that it's not only Christmas that we celebrate, but also Easter and the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross as he paid the penalty for our sins and his resurrection that promises us new life and power over sin and death. And so all of that is mixed up in our celebration of Christmas. And as we spend time with our families, as we open gifts, as we celebrate around the table with wonderful uh, holiday foods, I pray that for all of those experiences, that we would not, that it would never leave our mind that we're truly celebrating your love expressed by the best Christmas gift that we could possibly imagine. And that's a right relationship, with forgiveness of our sins, and a right relationship with you, and the promise of eternal life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.